customer complaint? Sounds like a Kubota tractor. Look at this thing. CRD Limited. My other diesel is a Cummins. Hey, hey, we have a 2005 Jeep Liberty diesel. Super rare vehicle. Customer complaint is he goes into limp mode or he just loses power drastically. Let's jump inside, take a look at the codes, and uh, do a diagnostic on this thing. So we have 171,000 miles. Here's the full health report on the Think Tool Pros. Only two codes in the PCM. Atmospheric pressure, barometric pressure sensor, and cylinder three glow plug circuit. Well, guess what? The customer already fired the parts cannon just a little bit, and he got a map sensor for it. Proudly made in China new boost pressure sensor map and <laughs> this is the original one it says let's see here Bosch EGR made in Germany and he said that nothing changed so under the hood the map sensor lives right here Actually says made in Germany on it. <clears throat> I went at Amazon and let me punch in that sensor number and these people said hey this is a knockoff so that's already a step in the wrong direction. There it is. So let's take a look at some live data take it for a spin with this sensor and then I want to put the original one back in and actually diagnose the real problem. Let's go. All right. So let's go into our PCM. I'm going to read data stream. And only 83 data pits, so let's just select them all see what this thing uh, reads all right so we're in two-wheel drive AC pressure da -da 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 -da. ambient air is fine atmospheric pressure is 14 psi that's normal boost pressure actual position 50% boost pressure 21 psi boost pressure volts cam position sensor 0 rpm interesting Coolant temp is 93. Injection quantity, desired boost pressure is 14. Engine RPM 3, 2, 7. <laughs> Not exactly sure. Fuel level, fuel pressure. Fuel temp, glow plug duty cycle, inlet air pressure, okay, intake air temp, mass airflow volts, you got oil pressure here, pedal sensor, it's, yeah, that works, okay. Uh, cruise control or speed control. And 
and that's all we have. So let's concentrate on just the uh, you know boost pressure or map sensor, and then take a look at the data pids when the engine is off, when the engine's running under load, and then I want to pop in the original sensor and see if there's any difference before moving on with the rest of the diagnosis. So with the engine at idle, our boost pressure is 21.7 PSI and we're at 0 0.8 volts. Let's shut the engine off. 6.7 PSI So the only thing that changed here, look, it says 19 PSI, 21 PSI. That doesn't make any sense. Why did it drop down to like 6? So let's graph <clears throat> boost pressure and boost pressure volts. So you got 21 PSI and 0 0.8 volts. Interesting. Start up. And we'll put it under some load. Hmm. Boost pressure position didn't change much, I don't think. Okay, it did, so 70% there. That must be the wastegate. And then boost pressure drops to 18, 21. How does it make any sense? The engine's off. Okay, interesting. All right, so looking at the OEM wiring diagrams here, we're not do, gonna do redrawn. I couldn't find the sensors on there. So we have a boost pressure solenoid there, EGR solenoid, EGR airflow control. Let's go to the next one. Water and fuel sensor, front control module, engine control module. Accelerator pedal sensor, crankshaft position sensor. There's a camshaft position sensor, engine oil pressure sensor, AC pressure transducer, engine coolant temp, got our alternator, fuel pump module, EGR solenoid, EGR airflow control, we'll keep going, fuel heater, fuel pressure solenoid, fuel heater, brake lamp transfer case, clutch interlock, Brake lamp, AC switch. Oh, where's the good stuff? AC again. There are the glow plugs. Vacuum reservoir solenoid. Got our fuel injectors. Fuel pressure sensor, fuel temperature sensor, ambient temperature sensor. Mass airflow sensor. So let's see if the wires match up here. <laughs> you got three brown and orange and one pink and white. We got one pink and white here on pin three, that's correct. Now two, five, and six 
the colors are not not original but at least we have the pins where they're not agreeing with the diagram the radiator where is the map sensor all right so the P105 inlet pressure sensor signal plausibility uh, symptom when ignition on, no other IAT DTCs present ECM, engine speed below 800. The difference between the inlet pressure sensor signal and the atmospheric pressure sensor signal is 3500 HPA for 5 seconds. Mm, we didn't see any of these sensors on the wiring diagram. I can just search pressure sensor. <clears throat> fuel pressure sensor manifold pressure vacuum sensor how about that and there there should be an atmospheric pressure sensor map sensor that's all we get it's not on the wiring diagram and it's not we didn't even show a picture of it this this is weird Okay, so the boost pressure sensor is also the intake air temperature sensor. It's four wires. And again, it's not really helpful. We don't have a wiring diagram. But we have a connector view. Here we go. So sensor ground, IET sensor signal, boost pressure sensor, 5 volt supply, boost pressure sensor signal. That's four brown and orange so we can back probe that and see what the voltage is see if it agrees with our scan data I also want to find the atmospheric pressure sensor wherever it is okay very interesting so I plugged in the OEM uh, boost pressure sensor and uh, we're reading right here 1.56 volts 13.9 psi if we plug it into the replacement sensor that the owner put in there's 1.56 volts that's the signal wire now let me swap it out So you can see boost pressure volts is zero and boost pressure is doing something funky. Okay. Let's plug it into the one that's on here right now. One point five six volts. It says 14 psi, which is should be the same as atmosphere. So atmospheric pressure volts, 3.82 volts. Wherever this sensor lives, that's a good reading. We're about 14. And then boost pressure volts is 1.56 at 14 psi. Now let's uh, let's start it up and see what what happens here, because before we were reading really really weird numbers. I'm going to stink up the garage here. <clears throat> let's see, let's graph this. The boost pressure and boost pressure volts. Okay. I can hear the turbo spooling. Okay, so that seems to work fine. Before we had no boost at all with that trouble code. Now I don't know why ambient air temp volts is zero. 
Ambient air temp degrees is 60, okay. So right now the sensor might be working okay, but I don't trust it. So the second part of the sensor is the intake air temp, which uh, seems to be accurate. If I unplug the sensor, that goes to five volts, that goes to minus 40. Inlet air pressure, inlet air pressure volts. I don't know where that sensor is. Boost pressure is obviously this sensor. And atmospheric pressure, we don't know where this sensor is. Or the ambient air temp. <laughs> well, I don't know why it shows zero volts. You might be thinking that the intake air temp sensor is integrated into here. Well, if I unplug it, absolutely nothing happens on scan data. So, not sure. Well, the <clears throat> mass airflow sensor for the diesel is just mass airflow, so there's no intake air temp in there. So there's a fused power, 5 volt supply, airflow sensor ground, and mass airflow 5 volt supply. Not sure why there are two supplies, but that's the way it is, so we're going to leave that alone. Uh, I'm going to take some notes. Well, this is a counterfeit sensor. They are good at counterfeiting, but why would they put it in a made in China box? That's what I don't understand. I mean, definitely different. You see, those holes are deeper. These are not as deep. And they even got like the little prints on there. Even the date marker. Amazing. Alright, so. Boost pressure volts, that's plugged in. Ambient air temp volts, I guess I'm not worried about it because we're showing a good temperature. Intake air temp, yep, 85 degrees. And then inlet air pressure, well, again, I'm not sure where, where that number is coming from. Because atmospheric pressure is a little different. So we still have two mystery sensors, atmosphere and inlet air pressure. All right, so let's uh, read fault code. Air <laughs> intake air temperature sensor stuck. So let's clear DTCs, yes. Clear codes. That's complete. Read fault code. No DTCs. Let's just drive it around and look at some live data. All right, here we go. Let's just graph all these. All right, let's see. From zero, I'm just gonna Give it the beans. Yeah, it pulls pretty good. <laughs> this is pretty peppy. Drives great. Let's see what our boost got up to. About one atmosphere, so 14 psi over atmosphere. 33. So this is a 15 pound turbo, looks like. I don't know, it drives great right now. Let's keep going. So this thing is running absolutely beautiful. Uh, no issues, no check engine light. Uh, so, what do we do? With So, with that. Replacement map sensor, uh, we did see really weird readings, right? It went up to like 21 PSI and 0 0.8 volts uh, with key off. So potentially, it could have been a you know a bad contact at the sensor and the guy replaced it with a crappy one, <laughs> which didn't help and now he's like, I give up. And we put the original one back in Everything's good, contacts are good, voltage is reading perfect. It runs like a dream. This is a cool truck. It, it really gets up and goes. Uh, it gets 30 miles to the gallon, he said. 
Um, man, I wish this engine was in the XL7. <laughs> That's kind of neat. So I'm gonna keep driving it. If nothing else, then we'll we'll ship it. But. That's how it goes sometimes. The, no parts required, just put the old parts back on and it's perfect. We're back in the shop. The Jeep drives really, really well. <laughs> I want one right now. No DTCs. So we're gonna tell the owner to donate this piece of crap to the garbage and that's it. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. So this truck, I mean, it ran great. I think that is the only issue, is the map sensor voltage, the boost pressure voltage. Now, the question is why did the original sensor apparently act up? Well, this engine, it vibrates pretty, you know, it's diesel, so there's more vibration than on a gas engine, and you could see it was vibrating like this. So this pigtail comes up and goes into this harness. Now I want to see, I just want to graph the voltage on here and do kind of a wiggle check, a tug test. Maybe there's terminal fretting on those pins on the connector. That wouldn't be out of the question. So let's just see if we can get this signal to act up. Just simulate a little vibration. We'll pull on this. I mean, it looks rock steady, doesn't it? If it's not a wiring problem, I would want to uh, at least spray some deoxid on those pins and uh, maybe close them up a little bit for more tension and then ship this thing. So I'm just using a small dental pick <clears throat> to kind of close these little spring-loaded terminals up just a hair. And then give it the good old fashioned little squirt of deoxid. When we plug it back in, you should see the boost voltage go up to 1.56. So pass the wheel check, pass the tug test. You can see the computer is smart, it'll slowly decrease the uh, actual value after you know the voltage went straight up, and this is the reported data. So it doesn't want to change that signal too fast. So let's just make sure we didn't set any trouble codes. We might have. So yeah, 105. That's the one we had before. So clear DTCs. Yes. Clear fault code completed. All right. Well, I think that should be it. Yeah, if this thing comes back, we'll uh, re-diagnose it free of charge, but I'll give the guy a, a one-year warranty. Uh, if it fails again, might need a new connector. I mean, those pins might just be getting a little weak. That's the only issue that uh, I see with this truck. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.